The Touch Mix has four multi-effect processing engines, which you can use for a mono delay, a stereo delay, chorus, or pitch shifter. You also have access to two reverb processors, the Dense Reverb and the Lush Reverb. All of these processors can be used in any combination. On some other mixers, you have to give up auxiliary mixes to get all of your effects processors. I'm happy to say that on the Touch Mix, that's not the case. You get four dedicated effects buses, and you get one pitch corrector that you can apply to any mono input channel. The effects routing on Touch Mix is what you would expect to find on any full featured digital mixer. There are four post fader effects sends from each and every input channel, and each effects processor has returns to the mains and the aux outputs. Let's look at the processors first. Here is the main effects screen. Most of it is occupied by the effect processor control panel. This panel lets you store and recall presets, and choose between processors and control effect parameters. Right now, we're looking at the dense reverb control panel. If you select another type of processor, the controls and appearance will change. Here's the mono delay. Note the tap tempo button. Touch it, and you can set the delay tempo using the master control wheel. Some of the control panels also include a simple mode option. To the right of the control panel is the effect return master fader. This adjusts how much of the effect is sent to the main output. Now across the top, you'll see a row of knobs. These let you return the effect of the auxiliaries for performers who want effects in their monitors. The EQ tab at the top takes you to a two-band EQ with a variable low-cut filter, so you can fine-tune the sound of your effect. EQ settings are stored with a preset. So, that's the processors and its returns. Now let's talk about how to get your channels to the processor. In addition to the effects wizard, which we covered in a previous tutorial, there are two ways to get your input channels to your effects. From the input channel screen, just select the FX tab. On the left of the screen, you will see four processor icons. If you wish to use a different processor or preset, touch the icon to go to the FX master screen. Press home to come back. The four horizontal faders are your effects sends. Bring up one or more faders for the effects that you want to use on this channel. If you're in advanced mode, you will see two global effects parameters knobs. These let you adjust the two most important parameters for the selected processor without having to go to the master effects screen. Now, as I mentioned earlier, there's one pitch corrector on the mixer. Touching the enable button assigns it to the currently selected channel and unassigns it from the previously assigned channel. Use the blend control to vary the mix between the wet and the dry signal. 100% wet is used to correct the pitch. A blend between wet and dry is used to provide a doubling effect, and dry bypasses the pitch correct altogether. Use the key control to select a musical key signature. Both major and minor key signatures are available, allowing the pitch corrector effect to be more accurate in determining what the intended note is. Use the correct rate control to adjust how quickly the pitch correction tracks. You can also see the sends and return levels for all your effects at once by selecting Effects Overview. To use Effects Overview, just press Menu, then Effects Overview. Here you can see and control all of the sends for all of the channels all in one place. Touch Mix has amazing effects features and capabilities, but there's more to it than that. The sound quality of these effects is equally impressive. Hearing these effects in action will demonstrate the development team's attention to detail, because the sound of the Touch Mix's processors rival those of the go-to rack mount processors that concert engineers rely on. Mm -hmm.